Hello, yes, let's talk art supplies. I sure hope you are ready for it. And I think you are because we all love art supplies, right? If you go to an art supply shop, you just pass by it, you can't help it, you just have to go in. And then you can't help it, you just have to buy something. It's, we all do this and um, yes, we, um, we are addicted to making art, but also to art supplies. And I think it's a good addiction. It's fine. Um, welcome to this Facebook Live. Welcome to my studio. I just redecorated a little bit. I finally put some art up. Um, let me show you. So I can, uh, I have these clipboards and I can change my art as often as I want to. There's even a, a a drawing that I made, I think, when I was 13, maybe, um, started hatching very early on. And there's a, a little secret from Sabine uh, Wisman, who is in uh, sketchbook school as well. Um, so, uh, welcome to my newly decorated studio. Okay, so today I am talking about art supplies and not just any art supplies but I will just explain a little bit about the supplies that we will be using in the new course Imagining in Sketchbook School. Um, as you may have uh, heard or seen or already know uh, we have a new course coming up it's called Imagining and it starts this Monday so um, Make sure you don't miss it because it's a course that will definitely stretch your creativity. Um, it's five weeks and you'll have five teachers and all the teachers are so different in their approaches towards making art and in um, their approaches to what to use, what kind of stuff, what kind of tools. And even though it doesn't really matter, what kind of tools you use because you just need to be kind of confident with it or comfortable at least. Uh, and we always say, and it's true in sketchbook school, if you take a course, all you need is a piece of paper and a pen or a sketchbook and a pen. That's even more ideal. And you can definitely take just uh, a regular pen um, and, uh, and use that throughout the all of the course but you guys have been asking what do I bring to class do I need to buy anything uh, for this for this particular course we don't because I know for a fact that you have a lot of art supplies you have enough it's never enough but you do have enough um, but if you want to know and if you want to you know, start thinking about it a little bit and um, uh, start um, preparing or maybe even warming up or trying some of the stuff out, then um, I've got some tips for you. So let me just go through it um, uh, in, in the order that, well, it doesn't really matter what order. Um, so let's start with the, one of the simplest things um, in my class um you i am going to work you can work with whatever you want for the homework assignment but i am going to work in my demos i have a whole whole uh, series of demos actually it's not just one demo it's one long demo of a, a five-day thing actually it's a really cool project um and what I will be using, because I want to create sort of a story, I am using a simple pencil, because I love pencils. They are just so reliable, and um, this one actually doesn't have a tip. <laughs> doesn't matter, because I don't need it right now. But I think this is the actual pencil I use in the, in the demo, and it must have fallen on the floor. Anyway, a pencil. And also I am using a red pencil, but that's just because it fits into my um, project. 
So I'm not going to say too much about it, but I can show you uh, a page from my demo uh, work, just because I know you're a little bit curious and you've seen it um, in the group picture. So here's a page uh, that I did during my demo for the course in Imagining. And as you can see, I'm using just a pencil and a red pencil because the red pencil will come back on every page in this little book. And this little book is actually, woo, you saw a glimpse of it, a concertina. You don't need to use a concertina sketchbook. Um, it's really not necessary to go and buy one. You can just do your homework for the class that I teach in Imagining with your regular sketchbook, just use that. But if you want to use uh, a concertina sketchbook, I do provide in class this little thingy. And that is just a very simple explanation of how to use, how to create a concertina sketchbook. Um, so, uh, I, I think it might be handy if we post a little um, JPEG of this uh, below in the, in the comments. I can do that later because now you might be actually a little bit curious and you want to make one. So this is one that has like five uh, double pages. So you can create, so you can fill a whole page, a double page each day for five days during the week of your homework. If you want to, but again, you don't need to. Um, you can buy one if you want to, but you can also just use your own sketchbook that you are working in right now or any other um, cool book that you have, or you can make one. We'll make sure that you get this JPEG, uh, this, uh, this image. Um, Yes, Anna, I, I love concertina sketchbooks as well. That's why I use it in my demo. Um, it is the one that I have. I bought it. I just sort of, I didn't even look for it. I just sort of found it in a shop in uh, the Netherlands, the HEMA. And uh, it's, uh, it's a book that is actually for, it's a photo album or something like that. It was just perfect for what I wanted to do. But as I just showed you, you can also make one yourself. It's really simple to do. Um, so that is actually really all you need for my uh, class. Uh, pen, uh, pencil and uh, maybe a red pencil, uh, or you can use a pen, you can use watercolors, you can do whatever you like, as long as you bring your imagination with you and be open to sit down and just come up with something without really forcing it. By the way, I also use a eraser and I use one of those kneadable ones just because I like doing this. Anyway, um, that was just a joke. They are really handy and they don't smudge or anything. So, um, that is one. Uh, what else? I, I have gathered all sorts of stuff here. So uh, another um, uh, lesson in imagining is the one from Marloes. Marloes de Vries, she's an illustrator and she makes comics and she makes beautiful work. Um, and her uh, the way she works is um, she works with pencil, and fine liners and watercolors. That's that's her basic kit, I think, and also uh, uh, color pencils. But in her class, she uses uh, watercolors, fine liner, and pencils. So for her class, you would you you would need this, something like this, and I have the same set as she does. A very simple watercolor set. Um, that will just do. But again, you don't need to do it exactly like she does. It's really about the idea that she gives you. 
uh, in your homework assignment and then you can use whatever you like. If you want to use crayons or ink or gouache or acrylics, it doesn't matter. Maybe you even want to do collage. It doesn't matter. So, and this, these things, you will get this in whatever form you have this. So don't rush to the art supply shop. Just get it out of your pocket or your bag or your closet or wherever you keep the stuff that you buy in the art supply shop. Um, uh, let's see, I can see that some people are also uh, talking about um, the uh, concertina sketchbooks and that you can buy them on Amazon. That's a great tip, Dolores. And um, yeah, in, in, in Lisbon, they are very expensive, says Anna. You can make one yourself and it's really not expensive. You just use printing paper or uh, any kind of paper that you prefer and you you just fold it, glue it together, and you have your own sketchbook. So don't go out and buy something too expensive. Because uh, the point is also, if you make it yourself and it's a little bit like not too fancy, then you will be less precious about the drawings that you make in it. And I think that is very freeing. So don't go buy something that you think should be a beautiful end product after you finished all the pages. Don't do that. Just go for whatever sketchbook you have and, um, and use that. All right. Um, so that was Merlus, watercolors, fine liner. You'll be fine using all that. And um, uh, for, oh, yes, for Stefan, it might be handy to have a little bit of ink close by. So here's a little bit, a little um, India ink, a little uh, pot. Is it a pot of India ink? Oh my, hang on. Um, a jar, I don't know, a uh, bottle, that's it, of India ink. And um, you can use this for his homework assignment. You might know Stefan Bulger from his daily ink monsters. Um, and we're going to make one too. He's going to show us how and um, uh, we'll use a blob of ink. But even if you don't have any ink, don't rush to the shop because there's other ways to do this. We actually will provide you some stuff that you can use, a template. And um, so if you don't have any ink that you can splosh around because the ink monsters start with just a, a blob of ink. And then from there you just see what it looks like if you can make something of it and you create a monster. So um, ink it is and also he uses a fine liner to go with it. That's all you need. Um, and if you want, you can color, of course, and you can use acrylics, color pencils, gouache, watercolor. Yet again, it's up to you how you do this whole thing and how you fill your, uh, your pages and how much of your art supplies stash you will use. Okay, um, who else do we have? We have um, Nina Johansson. She keeps it really simple as well. Um, her, her class, you may have seen some of her art sprinkled by uh, the Sketchbook School page because uh, we love all the art she made in that little book, that uh, journal that she had, just a simple line journal, and she made herself, she promised herself I'm going to do a drawing every day. I need to break out of the drawing from observation. I'm going to draw from my imagination. Now that's a big thing, a big assignment to give yourself, to do that every day. And she's going to tell us how she did that. Um, she has a lot of tips. Um, yes, true, Suzanne, uh, for uh, Stefan's uh, class, just backing up a little bit. If you have uh, that that little jar of um, black ink, if you blob it 
splosh it down the paper, you might want to spread it. You can spread it with a brush, but he actually uses an old toothbrush. So that might be handy to you. You probably have an old one. Um, or you just use the one you use and then you'll have black teeth afterwards. No, I wouldn't recommend that. But anyway, also a toothbrush is handy to have, which is kind of a weird art supply. Um, so um, uh, Nina Johansson, she um, uh, gave herself the assignments, um, the assignment to do a drawing from her imagination every single day and she did that one year long it's amazing and the things that came out the drawings that came out are so different from her 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 watercolor drawings that she does on location it's just as if she went to a whole different world and that's what we're going to do in her class we will just visit a whole different world in our minds and um she will show us how she how she does those those uh, drawings. She usually makes those drawings just with a very simple uh, fine liner. She has different sizes though, so that might be handy if you want to follow her lead and do it the same um, use the same techniques. Um, also, uh, sometimes when she fills a page with a lot of um, uh, black she uses a brush uh, uh, like one of those black ink what's it called the um, um, the marker the brush marker that's it and I don't have it here I don't know where I, I misplaced it I just used it for the uh, for the lettering that I did in the beginning of this video um, and when she fills a page with a lot of black and she wants to add a little bit of white she uses a gel pen a white gel pen this is um, a hybrid grip gel pen from um, Pentel um, there are many out there and I'm sure you have one just check if it hasn't dried up or anything if you want to use it then you just make sure you have a fresh one. Uh, that's all you need for Nina's class if you want to follow her lead. But again, you can use other stuff as well. There is a question. Um, uh, there's a question. Uh, Dolores asks, what is the difference between colored pencils and watercolor pencil? Well, um, watercolor pencils, you can dilute them with water, water and then they act like watercolor paint. So you can paint with them, sort of. Um, depends a little bit on the brand, because some brands are sort of, it doesn't really, the, the colors aren't really as bright as you would have with uh, when you use watercolors. Um, so, yeah, you, that's something you need to find out. Uh, I can also see that um, Suzanne also explained in the, in the comments. So I, I hope I explained a little bit um, uh, clear um, so that's Nina's class and then we also have um, Onmar Onmar is Onmar Wynn is an illustrator who does a lot of uh, surface design and she makes patterns and what she teaches us in her class is I think it's really exciting because she takes daily stuff from around the house, in and around the house, and um, create something beautiful with it. And just by picking that one color that sparks or that one shape that she finds interesting when she, when she picks a flower from the garden, for example, just by picking that, following her intuition, she creates beautiful pages and she has actually three demos for us they're all wonderful to watch and you just your fingers will be like oh, i want to draw i want to paint i want to do this um, and she takes out all the tools that she has actually for her for her um, demos so um uh, what you will need for uh, if you want to follow again her lead You'll need watercolors like she'll be doing a lot of 
watercolor washes and she even she doesn't want to wait to, for a wash to dry so she uses a hair dryer as well um, use any watercolors that you have um, again a kit like this will be just fine uh, any other kit will do too um, as long as you can color your pages um, she uses many tools in, in, in one of her demos, um, like these uniball uh, pens in different colors. Uh, she uses black fine liner. She uses white gel pen. Um, she might even be using some colored ink. I am not sure if she does that, but you can, if you have any and you want to make use of it, you better just take it out. Um, for all that, you need big brushes, smaller brushes, or you can also use a water brush if you if you have that. So yeah. Oh, and what she also uses, and I don't have it, so I can't show it. Uh, she uses Posca markers, and those markers are um, bright, and they have sort of an opaque. Uh, they're sort of opaque so you can lay things on top of it uh, on top of your uh, watercolors and it has a bit of a different effect than um, normal uh, uh, markers but again I don't have I don't have any of those and I'm not planning to go to the art supply shop to buy them uh, I will do my homework with different tools maybe I use these guys, you know, I never use them. Maybe I can use those for um, uh, some, some colorful painting and drawing. You never know. So again, go and look at your stash of art supplies. You'll have enough to take this class. Um, and let's see if there's any questions. Um, watercolor pencils, those are... Um, those are all answered. Yes, I, I uh, agree with Marlene. Um, ink tense pencils, watercolor pencils, those are the best. They work really well if you have a wet surface to draw on and then um, the color will be super intense. That's probably why they're called ink tense. And um, uh, also, you can also just use them as color pencils, of course, and don't use any water at all. But if you add water, it um, it, it doesn't become any uh, lighter version of the color. It's just really intense. So not that we're going to use those <laughs> in, in imagining, but if you want to, you can. But uh, there's no uh, uh, demo that uses actually um, uh, uh, color pencils. Okay, so I told you about uh, the, the, um, the stuff that... Um, uh, own Mara uses in one of her demos, but in another demo, she uses this little thingy. So um, you can you can also use uh, other. You can use your your um, your fountain pen or other uh, pens that make uh, lines. But she really loves using India ink, and um, I forgot to to get it. Um, just a dip pen, and uh, because it gives your lines, uh, it gives you different line widths and um, you can't really control it and that's why she loves it. So this might actually be a good one to have. Um, watercolors, that's all you need, I think, for, uh, for her uh, demo and uh, to follow her lead and to do your homework and um, what you also need is a little bit of intuition because you'll really need to feel the spark. You know, if there's a certain blue that speaks to you, follow that. Go on and throw it on a page and then the, the drawing will kind of tell you what to do next. That's really what she, what she will show you in her demos. It's really, really exciting actually. So let me see, I, I can see that there's a few uh, questions. Um, so let me see if I can answer those. If you have any other questions regarding the course 
imagining, uh, if you are wondering about it, why is it five weeks and who are the teachers again and why are you teaching it uh, in it as well or and why is Danny not? Let me know and I will answer any questions. Um, do you have advice for kind of paper you use? Kind of paper that I use? Any? <laughs> I use any kind of paper actually. Uh, right now I am using a sketchbook of moleskin. It's just one of those um, uh, sketch, you know, the, the plain sketchbooks. I really like that. It doesn't take watercolors that well, but I don't really mind. And I, I'm you know, doing a lot of pen drawings anyway right now. So, and even if I want to add watercolors, I do it anyway. Uh, I like those. I do like um, the sketchbooks of Sea uh, White of Brighton. They are very affordable and the uh, paper is pretty good. I also had a sketchbook, a watercolor paper sketchbook from Hanemühle that I really liked. I tried that um, a few weeks ago and filled it and I really liked the feeling of the paper, how, it, how the watercolor, um, um, how it took the watercolor and how it took pen as well. So I hope those are a few um, tips that uh, might help you, Annette. Would the course make sense for someone who doesn't want to use watercolors, asks Sylvia. Yes, it would definitely, because there's a lot of ink involved in any sense. Um, there is, there is one, one of the, uh, one of the, the demos of Own Mar is really based on a watercolor wash, but that's just one of three demos in one of five classes. So if you are not interested, skip it. Um, you'll be happy with your, um, fine liners, your pencils, your pens, whatever else you want to use. So, don't worry about it. Um, you'll have fun, Sylvia, for sure. How do you access this course? Janice, go to sketchbookschool.com and um, sign up for Imagining. And um, then uh, you're in for a lot of fun. It starts Monday, so you're in time. What is my favorite brand of watercolor? Sudipta, that is such a hard question because I haven't tried many uh, brands, but I do go back to uh, two brands that I have in my tiny watercolor kit. This is my favorite watercolor kit. Um, it's um, a very old vintage kit from Winsor & Newton, Newton. You can't get these anymore. It's so cute because it has a little thummy, thummy thingy. Put it on your hand. And you can use it like that, just... It's beautiful. And I fill this with um, uh, Van Gogh, Van, Van Gogh, <laughs> Van Gogh, sorry, I have to say it in Dutch. Van Gogh uh, watercolors. And I also have a few um, that are um, Cotman. So those are not very expensive or high-end paints, but they work for me. I love the colors. I Sometimes I, I um, change colors, but this is mainly the palette that I use, and I, I really like those. So I hope this, this answers your question. Um, ba, 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 let me see. Why only five weeks, says Annette? I mostly need more time to do my homework. Yeah, and to watch all the movies. Yes, no, but that is not a problem, Annette. Um, that is why we do it five weeks, because we know that you can get overwhelmed if we, if we have more weeks of material. And you will have access to the course material for the rest of your life. Uh, you have lifetime access also to the community, which is great, but I, I think you are already in it. Um, and yeah, maybe one week for each class might be a little amount of time if you're super busy. 
uh, hopefully you can just do it in the weekends or in the evening and uh, enjoy it while uh, other people are taking the this, this same week and doing their homework at the same time. Um, but if you can't, it's not a problem. You can get, get back to all the material whenever you like, in your own time. Um, so don't worry about it, Annette. Um, let's see. Um, mm -hmm. Marlene Robers says, started with imaginative sketches. It always ends up differently than I thought it would. Yes, that is the same for me. It's exactly the same for me. I started my demo uh, for this course and I was super nervous because I had no idea what I was going to make of it. And um, I, I did a daily thing and every day at the end of my drawing, uh, the drawing that I did, I was so surprised what would come out. And I also had a few days, I sat down and I didn't have any idea. I was like, now what? I'm doing a demo and I don't even know what I'm doing. But if you sit down and you just make some space in your head or something, or you just breathe a few times, you know, in and out and don't panic about not having an idea, something will come to you. It's, it's pretty amazing. And it's true. Sometimes you have something in your head, you start drawing it, and then it looks totally different than what was in your head. But it's, it's fine, and it's fun, and it's fine too, you know? It doesn't have to be exactly that one thing that was in your head. So, um, yes, that, that is for me. It, it works the same for me. Yeah. Um, uh, let me see. Do you know when you will start the seeing class again? Pam, no, uh, we are not really planning to, uh, to, to offer that class again. We need to look at the, uh, the schedule for 2018. It is filling up already, especially the first months. We have some really good stuff coming up and we are also, um, Finding new faculty, we have some really great people already lined up, so that's that's great. Um, seeing, I'm not sure, uh, so I hope I'm not disappointing you about that. Um, sorry, Pam. <laughs> um, no, that's not a question. Johanna says, I have taken a lot of the courses and sometimes don't get to finish them until weeks or maybe months later. They are always waiting with open arms. Oh, that's great to hear. And, you know, there's a lot of people, uh, Johanna, who, um, who took urban sketching, but also took all the other classes that we took the classes from. So uh, those classes of urban sketchers, uh, of urban sketching were built from uh, other courses, other different courses. And I saw some comments of people who said, I took the courses, but it was like, I, I never s saw these classes before. So even if you revisit months later, you will see it with a whole different set of eyes because your skills have changed, your uh, view might have changed, your approach, you ha you'll have different tools. So um, it'll, it's great that um, you feel like even months later, um, the courses are waiting for you with open ar arms. And so are we. Thank you, Johanna. Um, the closest class to seeing, well, any class actually, um, Pam. And the, the thing is, if you take a, a course that is um, one of the community courses, like, like this one, uh, you'll be doing it with all these other, um, uh, other classmates. So that whole community feeling around it, of doing it at the same time and seeing what other people are making in the uh, in the galleries that is really really fun um, otherwise have a look at the the other courses that are on demand um, and um, maybe I don't know if you took urban sketching but you can still sign up for it if I'm uh, not um, if I'm correct um, that might be a good one for you um, 
let's see. Yes, it's true. Your perspective on life and your and art changes week, weekly even. Well, there you go. So you're cons constantly evolving. That's great. Um, yeah, and um, that's actually also why we offer lifetime access because it shouldn't end. It shouldn't ever end. Okay, so Barbara is off to buy some new stuff, even though I t told you that you shouldn't, but... Um, Right, you are. Just go buy yourself something, something fun. You are right. Um, okay, so I think um, I have all this. <laughs> you should see my desk right now. <laughs> I have all this stuff lying around here, and I really feel like drawing right now. So, if you guys don't have any questions, I uh, I'm go going to sign off, and um, uh, and I wish you a happy day. <laughs> I really hope you will join Imagining. Um, it's just a few nights sleeping before it starts. September 18, Monday, Imagining with the awesome teachers, Marloes de Vries, Onmar Wynn, Stefan Bucher, and um, I'm missing someone, uh, I'm blanking out. Uh, Nina Johansson, of course, and me. So go on and uh, sign, sign up if you haven't already um, at sketchbookschool.com. I would really love to see you in class. The first week of this class is, uh, of this course is my class. So I am going to warm up and uh, I'm really, really excited and looking forward uh, for the following five weeks in imagining. Go to sketchbookschool.com, sign up. Thanks for being here. Thanks for your questions and um, gather your art supply uh, stuff and um, go make art. Bye.